When it comes to Western video games, it's hard to think of a title more iconic than Red Dead Redemption. While the genre has been around since time immemorial, with players able to brave the American frontier as early as the 1970s with The Oregon Trail, Rockstar San Diego's romantic yet unashamedly human open-world game resonated more strongly with players than anything that had been released before. But prior to Red Dead Redemption becoming renowned the world over, it was preceded by a much more modest game, a light-hearted third-person shooter filled with cookie-cutter heroes and Hollywood villains, which would have been even more absurd than it ended up being had Rockstar Games not intervened. A pre-nascent experience that failed to earn the same critical and commercial mindshare as its successor, but needed to happen so that its developers could become what it is today, and Red Dead Redemption could eventually exist. This is the history of Red Dead Revolver. accessories and big changes are just over the horizon for the video game industry you could soon be playing video games that look something like this rockstar san diego began its life in 1984 as angel studios established by colombian artist diego angel the california-based outfit spent the first decade of its life producing visual effects for non-gaming media such as hollywood films like the lawnmower man and the swan princess before transitioning over to making games in the mid-90s Initially, Angel Studios was recruited to be part of Nintendo's Dream Team, a collection of talented developers brought together by the Big N to develop games exclusively for the Nintendo 64. While Angel would go on to eventually develop two decently received baseball games for the platform, the studio's pièce de résistance for the 3D console was originally going to be a vehicular combat game titled Buggy Boogie. Developed collaboratively with Nintendo's own Shigeru Miyamoto, Buggy Boogie would have featured robotic vehicles that could acquire other vehicles' abilities by eating each other, morphing and becoming more powerful in the process. According to a 2007 Gama Sutra interview with former employee Clinton Keith, the game showed immense promise but floundered as a result of Angel's lack of experience in the field, and was ultimately shut down by Miyamoto once it was clear that things weren't coming together. However, Angel's failure with Buggy Boogie would be made up for in 1999 with the success of its Nintendo 64 port of Resident Evil 2 and the open-world racing game Midtown Madness which it developed exclusively for the PC. After struggling for years to make it big as a so-called dream team, these releases thrust Angel into the spotlight and attracted the attention of many in the industry, including one Rockstar Games. The minds behind Grand Theft Auto saw a sort of creative kinship in Angel, bonding with the studio over their shared sensibilities and mutual love of vehicular combat. The two began looking into ways to collaborate with one another, and the following year, Rockstar would publish Angel Studios' Midnight Club, an arcade racing game set in London and New York, as well as Smuggler's Run, a racing action hybrid about smuggling all manner of contraband under the eyes of the law. It's around this time that Capcom, Pleased with Angel's work on Resident Evil 2, would enlist their help in making a game of their own together. Eager to see where this collaboration would take them, the Japanese and American studios would spend a period of time prototyping various failed projects, including a SWAT game, before ultimately settling on creating a spiritual successor to Gunsmoke around the year 2000. Originally released by Capcom in the 1980s for both arcades and the NES, Gunsmoke is a top-down shooter that sees bounty hunter Billy Bob attempt to cleanse the West of scoundrels and hooligans. Similar to how Capcom used Sweet Home, an obscure survival horror game released exclusively for the NES in Japan. As the original basis of inspiration for Resident Evil, the Japanese publisher hoped that Angel could likewise take Gunsmoke's core tenets and reimagine them as a modern-day blockbuster. Red Dead Revolver was born, or rather, a very peculiar version of it. After being incubated for over a year, Capcom would officially unveil Red Dead Revolver to the world in mid-2002. While 3D Western games were nothing new by this point, with titles such as Ubisoft's Gunfighter The Legend of Jesse James and LucasArts Outlaws having entertained players during the previous console generation, 
Revolver was unlike anything the world had seen before. A third-person shooter set within the throes of the American frontier, the game featured a wide range of whimsical and arcadey aspects. With a low regard for any semblance of realism, UI elements flashed constantly above characters' heads, enemies' limbs could be targeted and shot at on the fly, and power-ups could be collected from corpses to briefly bolster one's abilities. The game's developers also claim that defeating a boss would give players access to an eccentric special attack that said boss previously utilized, such as summoning a stampede of buffalo or an array of cannon fire to smite their foes. And those tired of the game's main campaign could enjoy a weird deathmatch-style multiplayer mode starring a quirky array of playable characters, including one who could fly. Capcom had initiated Revolver's development with the intention of making a 3D adaptation of Gunsmoke, and by all accounts, Angel had succeeded in doing so. The game wasn't top-down or on rails, with the player able to move about each of its levels with a limited degree of freedom, but it possessed the same exuberant atmosphere and manic action that so strongly characterized both the NES title and the simpler era it originated from as a whole. However, while this incarnation of Angel's Western romp would be well received by the video game press at the time, with many praising the quality of its graphics and environmental detail, not all was well behind the scenes. Speaking to BBC News in 2004, Rockstar PR manager Hamish Brown would reveal that Capcom and Angel had by this point become divided over what they wanted Revolver to be, with the former wanting the title to lean more into the fantastical and the latter wanting to root it more in realism. Unable to reach a consensus, the game's development had become stalled, and Capcom, despite continuing to showcase the title throughout 2002 as if nothing were wrong, had become doubtful that it would ever be completed. It's at this time that Rockstar would step in and save the project. Since the release of Smuggler's Run and Midnight Club two years prior, Angel and Rockstar had continued to work closely with one another as developer and publisher, with Smuggler's Run 2 released in 2001 and Midnight Club 2 already well into production. The synergy of their relationship was so satisfying for those involved that Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive, would purchase Angel outright in November of 2002 rebranding them Rockstar San Diego in the process. While the hustle and bustle caused by this transition would result in several of the studio's then-current projects being cancelled, including a sequel to Bungie's Oni titled Oni 2 Death and Taxes, Revolver would emerge unscathed. As Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser would explain to IGN in 2010, both he and many of the other higher-ups at the company had been consistently impressed by Angel's work on the Western title up until this point despite the aforementioned creative disagreements having stinted its progress. As a result, when Take-Two locked in on acquiring Angel, Rockstar offered to sponsor the project in Capcom's stead as part of the terms of the studio's purchase. The latter agreed, and in July of the following year, Capcom announced that it would be withdrawing from Revolver, with Rockstar revealing that it had taken over publishing duties the following December. Emboldened and encouraged by the project's new leadership, Rockstar San Diego would spend the remainder of Revolver's development cranking down the absurdity of its single-player and multiplayer. The game's story and cinematics were redone to feature a more grounded cast of characters and scenarios, and the player's abilities were reined in and refined so as to be more methodical and serious. The game would still be filled with troves of silly moments that betrayed its source material's grittiness, and video game mechanics that called back to its old-school inspirations but they would all be rooted just a few notches higher in the realm of realism than before, so that the experience would better align with the maturity seen in the rest of Rockstar Games' portfolio. Revolver's flying characters and obnoxious UI elements, the elements that demarked its time under Capcom the most, were out. When Red Dead Revolver would finally launch for the Xbox and PlayStation 2 in May of 2004, players found a game that belied its troubled development, at least for the most part. Taking place in the late 1800s, Revolver follows Red, a bounty hunter who lusts to take revenge on his parents' killers, on a series of madcap adventures across the Wild West. As is common with most other third-person shooters, Red has access to a small arsenal of firearms and throwable explosives, and is able to take cover behind most objects in his environment. Red will also occasionally engage in one-on-one -on -one duels with adversaries, and similar to the bullet time mechanic in the Rockstar Games published Max Payne series, can perform a time-slowing effect called Deadeye to rapidly make Swiss cheese of anyone in front of him.
Borrowing a page from its arcadey origins, Revolver grades the player's performance at the end of each level, rewarding them with more or less money based on various criteria, such as how quick, accurate, and adverse to damage they were. This money can in turn be used to purchase various benefits, including weapons, upgrades, and journal entries on the game's heroes and rogues. Red's missions are also occasionally intercut with opportunities to explore the fictitious town of Brimstone, as well as extended vignettes centered on the game's supporting cast, which includes Shadow Wolf, Red's Native American cousin, and Jack Swift, an English sharpshooter in a bowler hat. Finally, the game's multiplayer, Showdown Mode, allows up to four players to fight one another locally across three different submodes. Sundown, a deathmatch-style experience, Bounty Hunter, in which players compete to hit a preset bounty limit, and High Noon, which solely consists of dueling. Revolver would be praised upon its release for its atmosphere, which many felt nailed the grit and grime of its subject matter more strongly than any Western game before it, as well as for mechanics such as Red's Deadeye ability. Less unanimously loved were the sequences that focused on the game's supporting cast. While some appreciated the variety that these segments added to the experience, others felt they made the game feel needlessly disjointed, and took away from opportunities to further focus on Red's character, which itself was already very shallow. Many critics were also less than praiseful of the way in which Red moved and ducked around his environment, finding it to be not so unpolished that it made playing the experience a chore, but just awkward enough to be a nuisance. And while few took direct issue with the game's multiplayer offerings, most agree that they came across as an afterthought to the rest of the package, especially considering that they couldn't be enjoyed online at a time when network multiplayer was picking up in popularity on home consoles. While these flaws ultimately weren't enough to create a Revolver's critical reception, they nonetheless created an air of disappointment around it, one that could have only occurred with the people behind its creation. By any other studio standards, Revolver was a totally acceptable experience, one that did its genre proud for the era in which it was released. But for a game both developed and published by companies with Rockstar in their name, it was hard not to feel let down. People now shall know of your courage, cousin. Red Dead Revolver didn't light the world on fire in the way that its publisher's previous hits did, but it would still go on to sell decently and endear a fair few to its design, both outside and inside Rockstar. Dan Hauser would state to IGN in 2010, that while reworking Revolver mid-development into a largely new game was less than ideal, many were still pleased with the final product. In Hauser's own words, it was a cool game. And more importantly, it helped acclimatize Rockstar San Diego to life under its new parent company. Revolver would go on to be re-released on the PlayStation 3 in December of 2012 and the PlayStation 4 in October of 2016, with the latter version adding trophy support. Both ports offered serviceable ways for players to re-experience Rockstar San Diego's epic, yet even with the benefit of time and trophies on their side, they wouldn't generate nearly as much buzz or reverence as the game's open-world successor. Our documentaries are crowdfunded and made possible by the generous supporters backing us on Patreon. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing to our channel and becoming a patron to help us create more. Thank you.